welcome back to this NPTEL course on game theory. In the previous session we proved that Shapley value is the unique allocation rule satisfying certain axioms. Now in this session we will discuss another class, another notion of a solution to cooperative games. So this is known as a nucleolus. The concept of nucleus depends on what is called excess of a coalition. So let us S is a coalition of N, the excess is defined as the following thing. So E X S is V of S that is the V S is basically the worth of the coalition S minus how much the people in the coalition S are allocated in this imputation X, here X is a imputation. Recall imputation is defined in the previous uh, lectures, it is basically X is a allocation vector which is both individually rational and collectively rational. Okay. So, this is of course, this we are defining it for any subset S of N. Okay. So, the, there are uh, therefore, there are 2 power n minus 1 excess functions. Okay. So, now what is excess? So, basically in the allocation vector and their total worth and the, the deviation from the total worth of that correlation S and this is what. Okay. So, now this also measures this measures dissatisfaction okay, with a, an offered imputation x in a correlation. So, in other words what I am trying to say that if uh, S is the correlation that you are doing this V E excess the excess function here is basically telling you because X is the imputation that is offered to us. So, how much dissatisfaction is there? So, if V S is a uh, minus this thing if the worth of V S is more that means they are not happy. So, you want it as E excess should be as small as possible. So, that is basically the idea of this thing consider the following vector, vector E x this is basically nothing but E 1 x E 2 x E m x where m is of course nothing but 2 power n minus 1. What is E 1 x? E 1 x is basically E of x excess function corresponding to some correlation S1 like this E m x is also excess function correspond to some correlation. How are these chosen? S1, Sm are indexed according to the following. The E1 x is largest excess function e to x basically the various correlations look at the maximum excess over all correlations. So, that I am writing it as E x s 1 that is E 1 x and the least dissatisfaction is given by the correlation s m for the particular imputation x. So, that is E m x. So, now I have ordered all of them and then I have written this vector E x vector of excesses is in the decreasing order here E 1 x E 2 x E m x this is in a decreasing order. Now, to define the concept of this thing I need to introduce some this. So, let us take two vectors x y in R m. I will say that x is lexicographically 
smaller than y if the following thing happens basically this is denoted according to x less than equals to e y is the notation what it says is that of course e x the excess vector ok. So, there is a small error here this is r n you are taking the two allocations x and y and then I am saying that x is lexicographically smaller than y this I am using the excess vectors if th both are same then of course x is less than equals to y and y less than equals to x or there exists some k such that 1 less than equals to k less than equals to m and e i x is same as e i y for i that is up to k minus 1 and e k x is strictly less than e k y ok. It is a dictionary ordering. So, you are looking at it if the first e 1 x e 2 x this thing e 1 x is uh, smaller than uh, e 1 y then I will say that x is less than or equals to y. S similarly, if if x first two coordinates are same e 1 x and e 2 x e 1 x and e 1 y are same look at the next coordinate which is smaller and like that go on. So, this is exactly the dictionary order. So, now once you define this dictionary order on this e axis that is influencing an order on the allocation vectors x and y then we take that as this thing ok. So, what now we see is that the lexicographic minimum the lexicographic minimum is called the is called the nucleus of the game ok. So, with respect to this ordering if there is an allocation vector x which has the minimum which is the minimum that means every other uh, allocation vector has a bigger excess vector than this one then I will call that particular alloc such an allocation vector is the nucleus of the game. Of course, does this exist? So, in fact, the there is a very important result here. Which let me put it this thing there exists a unique nucleus for each cooperative game NV. So, the theorem actually says that given any cooperative game NV there is always a nucleus and in fact it is unique. So, now let us uh, compare with the three notions that we have seen so far. The first we have seen the core we know that core can be multiple the size of the core can be as large as possible. The second is Shapley value which is unique which is actually a very famous uh, concept that is used in the cooperative games Shapley value is uniquely characterized and now we are seeing the nucleus once again this is a unique list. So, nucleus and cooperative game enjoys the uniqueness whereas the, the core need not be unique ok. So, now first we will work out some examples and then we will go to the other parts ok. So, let us uh, look at an example. So, let us say a small company goes bankrupt owing money to three credits. Okay. So, for A let us say some 10,000 not specifying the units for B 20,000 and for C 
you say 30,000 ok. Com but company has 36,000 only basically to cover this debts. So, how should the money be divided ok. So, so let us look at this particular example. So, the for A they have to give 10,000 for B 20 for C 30 and but the company has only 36,000. Now, how this money be divided? So, there are several ways you can do it for example, you can say the pro rata we can do it, but now we will actually work out how this nuclear less and for example, even Shapley value help here. So, let us uh, write down the characteristic function, there are 3 players. So, these are the 3 players and then characteristic function V of empty set of course is 0 and V of ABC is 36. So, measured in 1000, so let me not uh, worry about that and ok. So, let us say if V of A, what will be V of A? If V of A is 0. The reason is that B and 6 gets 20 and 30. So, if A alone is coming that B and C can together climb the money and then they can try to split therefore, V of A becomes 0. Similarly, V of B will also be 0 because A and C their climbs is bigger than 36. So, therefore, V of B will also be 0 ok. So, V of C if you look at it, if A and B form a correlation, if I divide the, if, I, if they take their money, then 30,000, the remaining 6. So, therefore, this will be 6, ok. Similarly, we can find that if we write down in the same fashion, V of AB will be 6, V of AC will be 16, V of BC will be 26. So, the same way you can argue and then this thing. So, now this is basically the correlation form game now let us take an allocation x to be x1, x2, x3. Let us say this is a efficient allocation. Recall what is an efficiency x1 plus x2 plus x3 has to be 36. Now, we will look at the excess functions. So, we have to write down here S V S E X S ok. So, if I take A as this thing V of S is 0, if A is the correlation S is equals to A then V of A is 0 and E of X comma A because V of S is 0 this will be simply minus X 1. So, B if I take it. 0 this is minus x2. So, like that I can actually calculate all the things c for c it is 6, it is 6 minus x3, a b this is 6 therefore, this will be 6 minus x1 minus x2, a c is 16, this is going to be 16 minus x1 minus x3, b c is 26 and then this is going to be 26 minus x2 minus x3. Then these are the excess uh, functions that we have defined. Now, what we really need to now look at is for different uh, excess allocation vectors, what you have to calculate these values. For example, if I take x to be the 6, 12, 18, we can calculate this to be minus 6, minus 12, minus 12, this is also minus 12, this will be minus 8, minus 4. So, like that we can do it for, for example, 5, 12, 19 if I take it, we can calculate this as minus 5, minus 12, minus 13, minus 11, 
minus 8 minus 5 like that we can do it for many this thing ok. In fact uh, by looking at these things and uh, by little work we can say that the nucleus here is going to be 5, 10.5, 20.5. So, it requires one to calculate this one because it you remember we have to for each x we have to look at the order them and then try it. So, here it is worked out for two examples, but one has to be a little careful to see what exactly is the nucleus. So, it, it requires a little work, but we can do it. Now, how does the Shapley value here? In fact, we can say here is that Shapley value is going to be 6 here, Shapley value for the B is going to be 11, Shapley value for C is going to be 19. Just apply the formula and then they use the this thing and what you have here is the allocation vector here is 6, 11, 19. So, in fact, if, if you try to compare these two examples, we can easily see that these two are not same. So, this is a very important uh, point to observe here. Okay. Now, we will try to give some ideas of the proof of this uh, nucleus in uh, existence of nucleus. Okay, let us say look at the proof. Of course, we will give only some ideas of existence ok. So, let us uh, first remember the following thing. So, the components what is E 1 x? E 1 x is basically the maximum of all the excess functions. So, it is a maximum of all i 1 to m recall m is 2 power n minus 1 of the excess functions ok maximum of all those things. Now, what is u2x? u2x is the second max of this thing. So, in fact, it can be written in the following way minimum j is equals to 1 to m of max i not equals to j e x s i or e i we can put it. So, let me write this is nothing but E i x s i r okay. e x s i. Okay. So, you take pick any j and uh, look at the maximum dip of all the i's such that i not equals to j. So, for example, to illustrate this one let us take j is equals to 1. So, what is this one max of i not equals to 1 e x s i. That means, exclude E x s 1 and take the maximum of the remaining n minus 1. Now, suppose look at this one, suppose the 1 corresponds to the maximum of that E 1 x let us say, then here this will be the second maximum because E x s 1 is removed and maximum among them. Now, in the all the other things E x plus E x s 1 will appear because when you take uh, j to be different from 1 then 2, 3 and uh, the 1 is always there. So, those appear here. So, therefore, the when I take the minimum of them, this is nothing but the second max among the excess functions. Now, like that E 3 x will be the minimum of j k. Now, we take 3 indices and then you take j different from k and then take the max i not equals to j not equals to k of the e x s i. Now, because you take 2 at a time you are removing 2 of them and then looking at the maximum. Now, if both j and k are exactly the first max and second max then that will give you the minimum among this one and then like that. Now, this way you can write all the things. Okay. Now, the excess functions now clearly can be written in this form. Now, most important thing to note here is that this excess functions E 1 x E 2 x E 3 x these are all continuous functions. 
okay. So, all of these are continuous functions, okay. So, therefore, the maxima and minima, the reason is set of all imputations, if we really go back and see it because they are efficient and other things, they are positive and all, they are that is a set of imputations is a compact set, set of all the allocation vectors because every person is satisfying individual rationality, they are above something and, and the sum of them is less than or equal to Vn, okay. Uh, therefore, the imputations are always the set of imputations is always a compact set. Now, these are all continuous functions. So, therefore, every function all these E1, E2, Ex they enjoy this existence of maxima as well as minima that we have used it earlier also. So, therefore, okay. now E1x for example, let us say look at the E1x let us say it attains minimal value. So, E 1 x attains its minimal value because E 1 x over set of all allocations x is a com this is a continuous function over a compact set. So, therefore, it will have a minimum value. Now, that means E 1 x at this minimum wherever this minimum is achieved that is going to be the point where the excess function can have the minimum value. In fact, whenever such if, if the minimizer is unique then this minimizer is going to be nucleus. Okay. So, there is nothing else to be done when you have such a minimizer here. But the problem is that this minimizer need not be unique, there may be a set of minimizers. So, once you know that there is some set of minimizers, what you need to go here is that look at the next level E 2 x. Okay. And then E 2 x is again a continuous function. Now, look at the set of all minimizers that E 1 x is minimized and then on that particular things, then look at the second function E 2 that also will have a minimizer and uh, go on. Okay. So, uh, once for example, if u to x has a unique minimum, then automatically that allocation is now fixed. Of course, remember when I go for minimizing e2, I only need to look at the set of minimizers of e1. And therefore, e1 is already minimized that means e1x will be same for any two allocations in the set of minimizers and then look at e2. If the minimizer of e2 over that is unique, then that gives you the nucleus. If the set of minimizers are not equal, uh, uh, unique, then I go to E3 and then go on one by one. Now, in this fashion, if you really go, it, there is a sum set where all these things are minimized. Therefore, this idea gives existence. Now, the problem here is that how about uniqueness? Okay. So, in fact, the uniqueness can actually be proved, but it is a slightly tricky, we will not go into the details. But the idea of this uniqueness is that you have this set of minimizers as a convex sets, and then the intersection of all these convex for somehow they, that they become really unique. So, I will not go into the details, but the details can be for example, found in the original paper of uh, Schmidler. Schmidler is the one who developed this uh, notion of uh, nucleus. So, original paper of Schmidler are in fact, we can look at for example, Professor Narhari's uh, book on game theory. In fact, this is the book the, the material from this book is used uh, heavily in this course. Okay. So, now of course, we will not uh, discuss about the uniqueness, but existence is proved. Now, note that before we go further, I would like to make a point here that the cooperative games we have 
multiple notion, notions we are defining it. So, and particularly the nucleus and Shapley value are unique, but then if you look at it the computing nucleus is harder than computing the Shapley value because Shapley value is given by a formula and computing nucleus is little harder. Now, in, there is one very interesting question that people ask here is that are there some learning methodologies or some non-cooperative framework to these cooperative solutions. So, this is a very interesting problem in fact there is a lot of work happening but we will not touch upon this. But in fact a good point to look at it is to start with is Narhari's book or even uh, Meyerson's book on game theory. Okay. So, with this we will stop in the next session we will consider another problem from combinatorial games. Thank you.